Now we're going to take a look at the healing brush. The healing brush works a lot like the spot healing brush tool, although it is not as simple. It doesn't use Photoshop to decide on what pixels you're going to replace. Instead, it is asking you to help it. Photoshop with this tool is going to ask you to tell it what pixels you want to use as source pixels for the replacement. Instead of the spot healing brush tool, which Photoshop just makes a guess and actually a pretty good guess. But there are times when Photoshop's guessing isn't good enough and that's when we turn to the healing brush tool. The healing brush tool is in the same palette bay as the spot healing brush tool. I click and hold down and you'll see that the different tools available pop out. The second one on the list is healing brush tool. So I'm going to choose that and it also works with a brush. So I'm going to right click and dial up the size of the brush and the hardness and I'm going to dial down the spacing. Hit the return key. Also notice in this file Healing Brush Me, it's at 33%. What I tell you, we don't want to do retouching at under 100%. So I'm going to Command Plus zooming up till I'm 100%. In fact, in this case, I'm going to zoom up a couple times more because I really want you to see the details of what's going to happen. Next, I'm going to turn my attention towards the Layers palette and add that new layer. And this time I'm just going to call it Edits. I'm going to add that new layer and I am going to do my retouching on that layer so it's non-destructive. Just like the Spot Healing Brush tool, in order for this to work, we have to make sure that Photoshop is sampling all layers. In the previous tool, the Spot Healing Brush tool, it was just a text box. Here, you have a drop down where you can sample the current layer, which in this case is transparent and is not going to work. The current layer and below, or all layers. In our particular case here, current and below and all layers are going to work just the same. I'm going to choose all layers. And so now I have this tool and I'm going to hold down the space bar and move up so that we're really focusing in on this mole because let's say our job here is to remove that mole. Well, I'm going to first show you what happens when I use the spot healing brush tool, the tool we used before. So if I take the Spot Healing Brush tool and I go over it like I did before and let go, you'll notice that it doesn't really do a very good job. You'll see that I lose some detail there where the shape of the nose is being defined and I get some uh, dark sort of spot areas right here that I don't like. So I'm going to Command Z. And then I'm going to use the Healing Brush tool. So back over, choose the Healing Brush tool. Now with the Healing Brush tool, if I just click and start to paint, like I did before with the Spot Healing Brush tool, it tells me, hey dude, option click to define a source point to be used to repair the image. This is Photoshop telling me that this tool requires me to tell it what pixels I want it to use as the source pixels to replace, in this case, the mole. And it's telling me how to tell it by option clicking or alt clicking on a Windows machine. So what it's saying to me is, hey, go somewhere else in your document, hold down the option key, and notice when I do that, the cursor changes into this little target, and then I click, hold down the mouse, boom, and nothing magical happens, nothing, it doesn't even give me any feedback. But what I have done is I have sampled the pixels in that location where I clicked, and now I move over and notice it's carrying those pixels with it. See inside the brush? It's carrying those pixels. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. It's carrying those pixels, and so if I click and drag there, can you see the little X 
over there to the left, that's telling me what pixels Photoshop is reading and where I am painting the brush, it is replacing the pixels of the mole with similar pixels of the sampled area and it's automatically adjusting the color because you notice the pixels I chose were a lot brighter. So Photoshop is smart enough to adjust the color, but it is giving you the same texture, the same pixels, and that way it allows you to keep some of the other detail that was around the area. So now if I zoom out to 100%, you'll notice that that looks pretty good. The mole's gone. Obviously, it's a little bit darker, but that's pretty darn good. If you wanted to chase away the darkness, you might try a couple of times over, but you got to be careful because you keep introducing new texture and then it can become a little bit of a mess. Suffice it to say, for this particular example, that's pretty good. If I tried to take a sample from even a lighter area, let me try over here, look how bright that is, and bring it down. You'll notice it does a little bit better. There are some other ways to handle it if you wanted the darkness to go away. You can change the blending mode. If I choose screen, and take a sample from here and put it over here. Sometimes that will make it a little bit lighter. Also, if I choose replace, it's actually going to replace those pixels. See that? So that can get a little bit weird. Sometimes none of these really are going to work very well for you. And if that's the case, then we are going to have to go to the clone stamp tool I'm going to show you in another video. But suffice it to say, I did use the screen and it worked pretty well. Sometimes you can even use the lighten and that sometimes helps. I didn't like that one at all. I liked the screen best. If I zoom out, you'll see that's pretty darn good. Now I need to look at it at 100%, so there it is at 100%, not a bad job at all.